Good morning. Today, the topic of discussion is endodontic retreatment. I will start with the code. The preservation of that which remains is of utmost importance and not the meticulous replacement of that which has been lost. Similarly, as a dentist, our primary aim must be to preserve the natural teeth with maximum possible effort rather than undergoing invasive extractions. Though root canal treatment is done with utmost care, many cases tend to fail due to some known or unknown reasons. These include intraradicular infections, either caused by persistent bacteria like E. faecalis, which has the ability to withstand normal antimicrobial procedures, or secondary infections caused by coronal microleakage. Next is the extraradicular infection from bacteria like actinomyces or foreign body reaction from cellulose-like material, both occurring in the periradicular area. Next is the true cyst, which has complete epithelial lining. In addition to this, the root canal anatomy is very complex and thus only mechanical instrumentation of root canal cannot remove bacteria from lateral canals, isthmuses, deltas and fins. A prime rationale of retreatment is to remove the source of irritation from the root canal space. Such failed root canal treated teeth has four treatment options. First, we can wait and watch without any vital treatment. Second, we can extract the involved teeth and replace the same with the artificial prosthesis or retreatment can be done either non-surgically or surgically. Wait and watch policy is commonly followed in asymptomatic persistent apical periodontitis cases similar to this case. The patient elected no treatment. But in certain period of time, the lesion enlarged turning the tooth symptomatic and this warrants further treatment. Second treatment option of extraction is advisable only when the teeth is rendered unrestorable in situations like distal root fracture resulting in a split root, post perforation, multiple distal root perforations, coronal fracture entering the furcation area, terminal periodontal disease, and so on. This failed RCT case has post and core along with the crown over it. Routine non-surgical retreatment will weaken the tooth structure due to unnecessary mechanical instrumentations. In such cases, surgery is a better option. Various surgical approaches are periradicular curettage, apical root resection, root amputation and intentional replantation. Next available treatment option is non-surgical retreatment. A key point that has to be remembered in retreatment is the tooth is already treated in these cases and the first step is to remove the previously existing coronal and radicular restorations. Access preparation in retreatment procedure is called coronal disassembly because it frequently requires the removal of previous restorations or crowns for access. Either access can be established through the crown or the crown may be removed. Access through the crown. The bar of choice is made based upon what material the existing restoration is made of. To cut a metal like cast metal or amalgam or composite, carbide fissure burst number 1556 is used. A round bar is used to cut porcelain crown. In case of PFM, a round bar is first used to cut porcelain layer. Then a transmetal or great white bar is used to cut the metal substructure. If you decide to remove the crown, there are various kits available in market like KY pliers, Corona Flex, Royden Bridge Remover, Crownomatic, and Ritual Crown Remover. This is nothing but a water soluble resin softened using hot water. The patient bites on this resin 
and while releasing the bite, the crown adheres to the material and gets removed. Once a coronal axis is achieved, our next step is to remove the radicular restorations which may be composed of katabarja, post, separated instrument or solid core carriers. Our target here is to gain access to the apical foramen. Now let's see gutta removal methods. First, in mechanical method, a plugger can be heated and penetrated over the pink gutta mass in the orifice and in the cervical third of the root. It is allowed to cool for 1 to 2 seconds and the material will adhere to the plugger and come out. Similarly, GG drills or piso reamer can also be used for removal of katapaja in cervical third of the tooth. Secondly, a large number H file can be used to engage the remaining katapaja and removed from the canal end mass. Many chemical solvents like chloroform, methyl chloroform, eucalyptol, halothin, rectified turpentine and xylene are available in market for katapaja removal. Endosol R is used for dissolving the resin. First, the solvent is injected into the pulp chamber and with the help of files, the softened but katapacha can be removed from the kennels. Finally, many dedicated rotary systems are also available in market specifically for the GP removal like ProTaper D-Series, M2R system and GPX system. The systems are designed in such a way that when it is operated, the katapacha will adhere to the file and come out of the kennel. Coming to the management of a separated instrument, post or solid coat carrier. If there is a separated instrument, we have two options. Either we can retrieve it or we can bypass it. Retrieval can be done using autograde method that is through the crown or using invasive methods like retrograde or intentional replantation. So, how to decide? If the length of the separated instrument is greater than 5 mm, it is in a straight kennel and if it is a reamer or lentilo spiral, then it can be retrieved. If the separation occurred beyond the curvature in apical third and if it is a H-file, it should be bypassed. First is the ultrasonic method. The dentin hindering the straight line axis is removed using files. A staging platform is created around the exposed part of the separated instrument. Then using ultrasonics, vibrate the exposed part of separated instrument in anti-clockwise direction so that it will unwind and pop out from the kennel. Next is the braiding is the braiding technique. Around three hand files are inserted into the kennel twisted to engage the fragment and then withdrawn along with the separated instrument. In wire, loop and tube method, the two free ends of a ligature wire are passed through the hub end of the injection needle. The wire loop is carefully placed around the obstruction, tightened and then removed. Various systems are available in market for post retrieval like Gonon system, Ruddle system, Canceller extractor kit, Endo extractor system and Matrack endo safety system. Taking into consideration Thomas screw post removal technique. First image shows a broken screw post. The head of the post is contoured to a rough cylindrical shape. Doma burr is then used to create a shape that refined burr can engage. Refined burr mills the post, then wrench is engaged around the post and counterclockwise rotational force is applied. Post is finally removed using the wrench. Sometimes we may also encounter solid carriers in radicular restoration. First step is to soften and remove the katapacha around the carrier using heat or solvents. 
ultrasonic puffing is done to facilitate grasping it with forceps and removal from the canal. It is a similar case where catapacha around carriers were removed. With the help of solvent, H-file is screwed into canal alongside carrier and withdraws it on removal. In certain cases, mist or extra canals are also present. Those can be accurately found using the dentinal road map by removing mesial self and troughing using ultrasonics chamfine bubble test in which sodium hypochlorite is placed on the chamber and the bubble will indicate the presence of left out canals. Chelating agents like EDTA and dyes like methylene blue can also be used for the purpose. There are certain there are certain points to be kept in mind during retreatment procedure, which are all derived from several studies. Wider taper when compared with narrow taper, nitai instruments when compared with a stainless steel instruments, and smaller apical preparations are found to increase the success rate of the retreatment. The combination of EDTA along with sodium hypochloride has resulted in higher success rate. Both multiple and single visits are found to be equally effective in case of prognosis of retreatment. Finally, here are some specific recommendations for retreatment for improving the success rate. First, calcium hydroxide can be mixed with sodium hypochlorite to be used as an intracanal medicament. Chlorhexidin irrigant is very preferable due to its substantivity property. Sodium hypochlorite when used with EDTA is the most efficient irrigant combination. Crown down or step down technique is commonly used in retreatment. Ultrasonic should not be used along with GP solvents. GP solvent when used leaves residual GP layer and blocks dentinal tubules inside the canals. And lastly, ultrasonic activation of irrigant act as an adjuvant measure for removing residual bacterial load, fillings and sealers. To conclude, what our mind does not know, our eyes cannot see it. Thus, a thorough knowledge of the subject is mandatory to provide the best available quality treatment for the patients. Thank you.